Welcome back to the bench. Today, we have an ICOM IC2800H again. Uh, this one, we recently fixed the display on and uh, put new LEDs, backlights in, and got it looking beautiful. But I don't know if you noticed in the old videos, it was stuck on transmit on the lower VFO. And we are going to try figure out why it is doing that. So because we have a stuck transmit, the first thing I want to look at is the microphone circuit. I'm 100% sure it's not the microphone because I've tested multiple good microphones in it. And also the fact that it transmits without any microphone plugged in. So what we want to do is start with the push to talk circuit because the push to talk is what controls the transmit and for some reason it thinks someone's pushing it to talk so on the block diagram here it says it goes to q78 and d47 but it should also have On this radio, it has a jack for doing packet data right here. So this will also have a push to talk, which is going to Q96, D73. So Q78, D73. Let's check out where those are on our board layout. Stop. Chances are we're gonna to have to pull the board from the radio because it's probably not going to be on the top. So here's our push to talk. And here's our other push to talk. I don't see any of those transistors in that area, those ICs. Let's flip it over, push to talk, Mike. There's Q78 right there. Q78, and it was a pin, well, pin four here. Also over here, we have push to talk pin three, and there's our Q96. So first step, is to open the radio and take a little look, but I'm most likely going to have to remove the board, which isn't a big deal. We just desolder the antenna connector, undo the final bolts here, and we'll have to re-compound uh, them, which is a good thing anyways. I like to put new heat sink compound on all of these thermal grease because it's just good practice in older radios. So let's get to it.
Well, that's interesting. After removing the board, if you look close here, let me just get the light on it, you'll see that there's one crooked looking resistor, but there's also one that's very crooked right there. Almost to the point where it's not making any contact at all. So that could possibly be causing us issues because it's right next to that Q96 IC for the push to talk circuit. There's another one up there a little bit that's connected, but it's someone's definitely been in here before. So isn't that interesting? Maybe it was knocked or when they put the board back in or something they hit when they were working on that other resistor that's up there. So let's take a look at that. Back to our schematic little board layout. I went ahead and I soldered this resistor back in place. This is the one here that was popped up, R514, right next to Q96. And then this other one up here, R297, has clearly been removed and worked on in the past because it had some big solder blobs on it and it was sitting crooked. It's definitely not the typical factory kind of bodges you see. Somebody's definitely touched it before. And maybe when they were working on this, they accidentally knocked this one. Or they knocked it when they put the board back in place. I'm just thinking. So, unfortunately, I went ahead and already soldered that down uh, with the microscope and forgot to hit the record button. So, R514 as you can see, is directly involved with Q96. It is part of the voltage divider that's going on here for this IC. And most definitely could have been causing our push to talk issue. This is uh, Q96 was the uh, packet connector, data connector, push to talk, and then the other push to talk, Q78 for the actual microphone is here. So this has most likely solved our problem. And I am going to temporarily put on our microphone jack and just power it up temporarily without uh, hopefully not transmitting just to make sure it's not stuck in transmit uh, before, before I end up putting the whole board back because you never know. Well, would you look at that? It's not transmitting. Who would have thunk? So, for the first time ever, I'm able to actually adjust controls and press buttons and things are happening. So that's nice.
I am going to say that that solved the issue. So let's put this thing back together now with proper thermal grease, and then I'll be able to actually transmit on it and test it without frying anything. So hopefully all is well. I guess we'll find out. Okay, so it's all back together. Let's just do a little test on it here. It's a little loud. I know the speaker works now. We are not transmitting. That is great. So let's go here. And let's go VFO. One forty four. And we'll go to my favorite little test frequency here. Audio check, 20 watts, audio check. Audio check, 20 watts, audio check. Okay. Well, I'll go on to check the UHF side of this radio and check the receive sensitivity and just do a quick alignment on it and it's good to go. But uh, I know we didn't really do much of a troubleshoot in this video. It kind of seems like it was an easy fix and uh, it goes to show that this happens more often than you think when you're buying used radios from people. Um, a lot of the time, people attempt to repair stuff and just make it worse, and then they give up on it, and they'll sell it, uh, it's not working. And uh, sometimes you just, you luck out with an easy fix, but this is a perfect example of that radio. When I bought this radio at a local swap meet, it had a note on it saying, CPU is fried and needs to be replaced, so it goes to show that uh, it just needed... Uh, you know, resistor fixed for that transmit, 
And then we also did some capacitor replacements in the display, which is a typical problem with these radios. And uh, we did the LED upgrade, which will prevent any further issues with it. So it's this radio's great little radio, and it's got lots of years left in it. And uh, hopefully it'll go to somebody who treats it well. Anyways, thanks for watching. Uh, Please subscribe if you haven't, leave a comment what you think, what you want to see, and uh, definitely keep on producing videos. Thanks.